Prima Media's Policy, I'm Sash Nimuthi. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satner joins me to discuss the romanticization and delegitimation of the ANC. Hi, Professor. Hi, how's it? While you do question the legitimacy of the ANC-led government, are you not perhaps romanticizing the ANC of the previous era? Yeah, I think it's possible that uh, many of us do romanticize, partly because we didn't know everything that someone like myself, I was in the country. Uh, I was never in exile. So we have a romanticized view of what was happening outside and we also didn't believe some claims. For example, the claims of torture in Quattro, I didn't believe because I heard it from sources that were very antagonistic to the ANC. Only later did I realize that the, it wasn't happening to everyone, but this, there were these abuses. And I actually interviewed someone once on, well, I didn't know it was on Quattro till he came and he asked to speak to me and then he said I could tape the discussion and then the discussion he was telling me about being in Quattro. So I think there's that, but there's also that the history of the ANC it's very long and it's very complicated and I think that uh, for many years much of it was banned literature so you couldn't actually read about it and NC uh, was not always the strongest African nationalist movement in South Africa people don't appreciate this it's not as if ANC was formed in 1912 and inevitably it would become the supreme organization. And I think it's only when you start reading the complexity, uh, for example, just as it wasn't the strongest, people don't really know uh, of how strong it was in some country, uh, rural areas, say in the 1920s. Some people like Peter Lim have brought this out in recent research. So it's, it's, it's also that some of the material has not been widely available. But I do believe that when we look back, there definitely were some very weak leaders, but also some giants. And I think it is important to recognize this because when you refer to the leadership of a particular great individual, it's not just to admire, to look at the person, in my view. It's to try and work out what are the qualities which lead you to say that Mandela was great and to draw on those, to commend those values to other people today. Now, in the most recent period, you had that trinity of Lutuli, I mean, um, Mandela, Sassoulu, Tambo. You had Lutuli before that, you had Moses Kotane, Lillian Goy, Albertina Sisulu, a number of people who I think are regarded as uh, justly, not romanticizing them, they're regarded as um, exemplary leaders because of particular qualities. One of these would be that you could trust them. Now trust, the loss of trust, is obviously very important today. But who did not trust Sisulu, Lutuli, Mandela, Tambo? Uh, the idea of not trusting them is almost unthinkable, or it would be very few people who've had experiences where they think they could not trust them. Also, these people, when you read, I did quite a lot of work on Rutuli, uh, when people went to speak to him and ask his advice, he would take a long time to give his answer. So you, you really felt when you asked his advice that he was listening carefully. He didn't just say to you, just do this or do that he would think carefully. Because when you give advice to someone under 
a repressive period of a repressive regime existing, when you give advice to that person, the advice has consequences. You may give them advice that lead them to be arrested or killed or whatever it is. So you have to have responsibility. Um, someone like Chris Hani, for example, <coughs> it's often said that when people were about to cross the border to do dangerous missions, Hani used to say to them, are you sure you're ready? Have you got any unfinished business here? Because it's important not to go inside. If you've still got things that are problems for you emotionally or whatever it is, because when you find yourself inside, it can work against you then, especially in detention, things like that. So that is important. Also, I think um, while the ANC is being, is delegitimizing itself through actions today, I think it's important to understand that when many of us, like myself, got involved, the ANC also had an important strategic input. After the banning of the ANC in the 1960s, it seemed that nothing could be done. And the ANC had this conference in Morogoro, which is quite famous amongst people who were in the struggle. And they made an analysis, and I read it at the time, and I thought, this is a viable way of changing the situation. So there was that strategic input which came from the ANC and also the SACP in a very big way. And um, as well as the exemplary behavior of some individuals because it's important when you build an organization which is supposed to be the bearer of a new type of society that people conduct themselves in a way that is emblematic of that. So the fact that Bram Fischer, uh, Moses Kotane, Walter Sisulu, Ruth First, all of these people were exemplary as human beings is something that gave confidence to people. So I do think there is some romanticization because um, there is a tendency to just use broad brush strokes to talk about the ANC, but I think there were good reasons to uh, elevate it as an organization. At the same time, I think uh, there has been a tendency to neglect the contribution of other organizations like the PAC, bearing in mind we were in the middle of a violent struggle, but also there was conflict with the PAC, conflict with black consciousness. But I think it's important for people who've come from the ANC tradition to engage with these other traditions and give them full credit for what they've done. If you argue that the ANC-led government has lost legitimacy, how do we restore a legitimate government? Um, You see, w what I was saying to you about leaders, they don't give quick answers. Now, I used to be a leader, and I don't give a quick answer to this one because the answer is difficult. Um, I think it's important that we shouldn't think that we're going to resolve the problems that we have today uh, very quickly. What we've got to do is, first of all, identify the problem. And I believe the problem is not just one individual like Zuma, because a whole lot of range of uh, structures are created whereby people benefit improperly. Patronage and corruption relationships have got to be identified, they've got to be addressed. We've got to reinvigorate a range of state institutions that have been undermined. We've actually got to get a debate going again. We've got to re-politicize South Africa. And one of the good things about the student movement is that they've introduced new ideas or revived ideas in a situation where people unite with one another, 
not because of ideas, but because of benefits they want to receive. So I think one of the most important things is to get political debate going again, get people reading, thinking, discussing with one another. And how to get out of this will gradually emerge from that. But I mean, I don't have the magic bullet. No one has the magic bullet. And I think it's very important not to profess to have simple answers. Thank you for speaking with us, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sattner speaking to Creamer Media's policy about the romanticization and the delegitimation of the ANC.